Aliens watching reality TV. Welcome back to Aliens Watching Reality TV. I'm Erica. And I am Josh. And we watched the Love is Blind season four finale. Well, when did you watch it, Josh? You say like two in the morning? I literally, like I, I, I was within 30 seconds of it. It got posted and I was watching it. I tried and then I fell asleep. And then I woke up at like 9 a.m. in the exact spot on the couch where I had been sitting before and it was not like the kind of spot where you would normally sleep on a couch and I was just like <laughs> freezing and I still had my makeup on I was like oh my god and then I just immediately watched the episode instead of like taking care of any of those issues yeah no I was like I needed to watch the episode I needed to know certain things okay oh yeah I couldn't wait and uh I feel like we kind of nailed it this season honestly like a lot of things went sort of the way we thought they would I mean, I, I, we kind of predicted everything perfectly, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. For real. We were, we were right about everything. We knew that Mike and Paul were not going to end up together. Um, the details, however, let's get into the details of that. Yeah. <sighs> so um, let's. So I will say briefly, about... I wouldn't have gotten this right. And I wouldn't have predicted anything right like five years ago. I'm not just like magically good at it. That's why I feel okay bragging about it. <laughs> Yeah, like, I, I don't know. I saw your tweets about that, and I think I think I'm still pretty bad at it. I'm trying to figure it out, but it helps to know that I am not the prototype. You know yeah. what I mean? Don't base your interpretations of other people on yourself, because it turns out we're not that normal. Yeah, we're just, I mean, and, and by, na- <laughs> by normally, it's just like humans don't really have a normal yeah, you there know, is there no is prototype. No, there is no Everyone's yeah. going to be wrong a, a large percentage of the time if they are interpreting other people based on themselves. But we yeah. all know. <laughs> yeah. But but it was it was pretty I mean, I was I think yeah. I mean, I was I was really really surprised about a couple of things, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Do you want to okay. tackle Micah and Paul first? Or do you want to tackle No, let's go in that? order. All right, let's so do the very beginning is we get to finally find out what Kwame's answer was, and they uh, they do a couple long shots of his <laughs> face just yeah. to keep us in suspense, um, and then he says yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we were we were kind of led to believe that there was some kind of tension over there, and there was tension, but it wasn't tension of the kind that is relationship breaking the kind of tension yeah. that it was was very beautifully described by chelsea in that you know they kind of express their opinions you know they talk about shit um and, and sometimes- i did notice just that like a lot of the scenes f- between them started having tricks of editing that meant like i was like we can't really know what's happening here because even Like, right then at the altar, the way they made it seem like he took a long pause before saying I do. If you look at the editing, they could have just put those in from other moments where he was just, like, standing there listening to her talking. There's no way to know that he actually paused that long. And he probably didn't. No, no, he probably didn't. Like, they they were clearly very in love. And, I mean, you could just see Chelsea, like, doting over Kwame just. The way she looked, she was so I would so say Chelsea is definitely very in love. I, I think Kwame is like, um, dude, they made out like real hard. But also, I think he's a little self-involved, like a little too self-involved to maybe really have his love be about other people. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I. Cannot, but also, I don't. I yeah, I don't really know. I don't want to judge beyond the fact that we were right. We were right in that Chelsea and Kwame were going to get married. Yeah, it's true. And a lot of people thought they weren't. No, nah, that happened. That was going to happen. So, so, suck it, everybody else. Suck it, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> totally. I was a little surprised that Brett and Marshall were not at Kwame's wedding. But Marshall... They never really do that. Like, um, 
I think honestly, Marshall coming to Brett's wedding is the first time that we've even seen one of the cast mm-hmm. members at another one of their weddings. I don't know if that like it was kind of they kind of wanted to tie it all up, you know. It's kind of weird. I mean, I think Marshall would have gone. And GL is kind of. But weird. I think he probably was only allowed to go because he wasn't also getting married. Like for whatever reason, uh, they just don't go to each other's weddings. I mean, it was. How did you feel about him showing up at Brett and? I thought it was great. Yeah. Um, looked, like, they made him look like he was sad, but I don't feel like that was the case. Like, he was probably there. He was, he looked normal. Yeah, um, I, saw, I saw somebody, like, thought that it was inappropriate that he was being sad, and they thought he was all, like, boohoo me, and that they would have been mad if somebody came to that at their wedding. But I didn't think that at all. I felt like he briefly addressed the fact that, like, yeah, of course, like, this makes me think of myself and that's sad but like he and brett have a very honest friendship it would be weird to not acknowledge what brett already knows he would be feeling but then he says that but you know, i'm here for you and that is the mm. truth and so i feel like that was a completely normal thing for him to say to brett in that moment and um it would have been weird for him to pretend like he didn't have any of those feelings and I think Brett was happy to have him there. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I was uh, happy he was there. I love their friendship. I think it's great. Yeah, yeah. I think Brett kind of took Marshall under his wing. You know, Marshall is like ten years younger than Brett, and maybe yeah, like eight or something. Yeah, but I was not expecting the kind of tantrum that 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 Brett threw. It was. I mean, I understand. I <laughs> just the way he just went after it was yeah i wouldn't say i wouldn't have called it a tantrum i don't think and i I wasn't surprised by it i mean i'm not surprised in that he did it you know this is brett we're talking about he's very particular about everything you know he likes his shoes a certain way he likes his clothes a certain way he likes his luggage a certain way so he pays like what 1500 bucks 1200 bucks for luggage anyway Mm -hmm. um so i understand um but yeah, I wouldn't have done oh, it so like it, that. Are we done talking about Kwame and Chelsea then? We're officially just moving. I on. mean, Kwame and Chelsea, I say let's do the little analysis bit at the end. Uh, okay, sure. Let's just go at once At once we like go from couple to couple to, to get through all of them. And then in the end, we can do the uh, more okay. analysis version. I just needed to know if it was time for me to move my brain on from... They're yeah, ready, we're moving so. on from Chelsea okay. and, and <laughs> Kwame. Kwame's just standing there smiling and like like Chelsea's just like looking at him like as if he's a prince and she's just so in love. And yeah, Sheesh. we're gonna leave them over there. Okay. Tiffany and Brett. Um I'm, they they really had some great moments that they showed even before the wedding. I honestly mm-hmm. it was nine in the morning and I was watching them get ready for their wedding and I was already crying. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. There's just lots of great moments. Like, yeah, that's they're just so times. real and genuine and in love. And yeah. they have some really beautiful moments with their families, too. Yeah. I mean, Brett's dad's crying towel. I was cracking up like a crying towel. That's so, <laughs> so funny. Yeah. yeah. But like the, sweet, too. The brother and his hair. Oh, my God. Um, he talked about it with he talked about it with Brett. Remember? Yeah. And Brett was just like. I don't really care today. Today's not your day. Which I understand that. He also sought. He also was like asked Tiffany if she was like, "What, what is your opinion about the hair?" And she was like, "Yeah, I think I think she was like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool, cool hair. Yeah." Um, but yeah, okay. Well, let's talk about the suit not fitting right. So we knew that there was going to be some wrinkle because they have used this clip of Brett being like, "This just shouldn't happen on your wedding day." Um, Prizes. And they have made it seem like it was going to be some big deal, which is part of how I knew it's definitely not going to be a big deal. <laughs> um, right. And I was just like, there's no way in hell that is like him talking about their relationship or anything like that. It's going to be some, I honestly, I just thought it was going to be uh, some practical type of thing and it, like what it ended up being. So I, I wasn't surprised. I didn't know what it was going to be about, but I wasn't yeah. surprised. Um and I didn't feel like he threw a tantrum. I didn't feel like I didn't feel like he overreacted. Honestly, I felt like just 
no, 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 I'm not saying. I'm just saying his I would have like and he that. had to get it out. Sure, but I feel like he he only says like three sentences about it, and he just has to get the frustration out. He's just like, this is the kind of thing that can be arranged ahead of time, like, and I totally get that when. It's just frustrating to know that, like, this could have been done right. There's no real yeah. reason why it wasn't. And now it's like, not only does he not look the way he wants to, but, I mean, we've talked about before, for a lot of people, the way your clothes feel on your body is a yeah, big deal. that's true. And it affects how much you can be in the moment, how much you can enjoy what you're doing. And I, even though we haven't really talked about Brett and Tiffany being neurodivergent, I think they are. Mm. I don't, like, I don't know enough about them necessarily to really go any further than that. I think this was like but, the newer divergent season par excellence. Yeah, which I even started wondering like, is that a Seattle thing? Is there like maybe a higher percentage maybe there? Seattle it just attracts neurodivergent people. Yeah. I mean LA does, so like it makes sense. Um yeah. Austin does, you know, yeah. They're they're hubs of us. Um and so I bet like it's important to him how his clothes fit. Um in a way that other people maybe just wouldn't understand. It's not just about how he looks. Uh, it was probably just about also, yeah, being able to have the comfort so you're able to c- completely enjoy what you're doing. Brett, if you're listening to this, that was not a criticism. Y- yeah. <laughs> also, I think just sometimes you use the word tantrum and I never really use it. And so I'm always like, that's true. Eh. I, mean, I guess part of it is because, yeah, I shouldn't use that word without well, it's just like, that, like because people do misidentify autistic meltdowns as tantrums and that makes them mm. really yeah, misinterpret it was, it was what's not a going on by any stretch of the imagination yeah. i think that's just why i have sort of an immediate like reaction to the word it's, itself that's all i'm not trying to be like josh how dare you say anything about brett like <laughs> <laughs> i mean i bet if tiffany was although how thing. dare you <laughs> yeah yeah and I, I i just also thought like you can see how in love with each other they are all the time whether they're together yeah. or not they always yeah. speak kindly about each other and they knew for sure the other person is going to say yes today and like i cannot yeah. imagine um getting married without that you know if you yeah, don't do for that. sure the other person's gonna say yes you shouldn't i need be married. the other person to sit with my family and their family present and vow to marry to say yes while their hand is on the holy book upon which they have faith okay also you shouldn't that's need what that. i'm gonna show up i will only show up to the wedding <laughs> if that person has i will do the same thing in return but like yeah the whole it, it, Listen, the way Kenny felt after Kelly said no was really sad. Yeah, like, I just, uh, once again just this... don't remember those people at all. Yeah, yeah. So, what happened I don't was know why. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna get to what the how things went, but like Kenny was very, very into Kelly and very sweet about it. And he had this diary in which he kept writing things, and we were supposed to find out about it after they got married, and they never got married. Like he was uh, writing nice things about Kelly or something? Yeah, yeah. Like about their life and whatnot, about the experiment. He was really, really sad. And when they, she said no, he walked out and like the cameraman was taking video and he was just like, James, please stop. Like this is really serious. I'm like really unhappy. And so yeah, <laughs> it was just sad. like. Maybe yeah, I blocked it, it out because just... it's too sad. I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was very sad. But um <laughs> But yeah, we knew that this was not going to be a no. Like this was like the Cameron yeah. and Lauren of the season. Yeah. I didn't hear a single person who watches Love is Blind express any doubt that Brett and Tiffany would get married. Honestly. Yeah. And yeah, we were no, all like, like, if they don't, I don't understand anything about the world. And maybe the world is, is wrong and it's time for it to be over because nothing makes sense anymore like <laughs> these people love yeah. each other everyone can see yeah that. clearly that's they love each other there's no question there's no doubt in my mind and um, and i love all their interactions with their family members they're already like becoming family together you know yeah. like they're already understanding the other person's family is my family and brett talking to tiffany's dad ahead of time and just everything that was so like, sweet i need to yeah. say yeah I okay. must say this. That was a very nice touch. 
the 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 fact that Brett yeah. asked Tiffany's dad. Uh, it was like really, really nice. I, I, the little adding the little tradition bit in there, you know, asking the parent. Um, I thought it was a nice touch, also because to me, the way he did it took away like the sexism that is inherent in the tradition, because like the tradition comes from you, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's the a dad business owns transaction woman. with the dad. Property, yeah, and, and so still the like asking permission. Um, is sketchy but like clearly they're gonna get married no matter what but he still wants the dad's blessing that's what he asked for Mm -hmm. and blessing versus permission are very different yeah and so i do think like it's respectful and beautiful to do it the way he did and um yeah i thought it was like a subtle twist on a tradition that made it uh not problematic you know the dad was like so ready for it. He was like, "Oh fuck yeah, <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> I'm totally about it." Yeah, it was really sweet to see that everyone totally agreed about the fact that they were totally good together and they had made the right decision. And throughout the the different episodes, as you and I watched this, like it became clear, like you said, like they were always smiling when they were together and they're always smiling when they were looking at each other. That is a very clear sign that the two people love each other when they cannot stop smiling, when they look at each other. Okay. This is, this is like a dead giveaway. Um, yeah, when, that's true. But I guess I'm not even necessarily always noticing that there's just something in their eyes. It's just the way they look at each yeah, other. Yeah. yeah. Like, like when they look at each other, they're, they're just they're happy. in their eyes. They're yeah. happy. Like, yeah, like even if they're like, sad, I feel happier when I look at you. So. Yeah, like I'm less sad because you're around. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really nice. And uh, yeah, I thought the wedding was beautiful. I think her dress was the best dress. Um, oh, she I, looked gorgeous. Yeah, she looked gorgeous. I she agree. Great best. dress. She looked wonderful. Um, we're going to discuss. He the- looked great. I didn't remember what he had picked out. Oh, my dad is calling me. That's interesting. Okay. So any any final thoughts about Tiffany and Brett's wedding before we move on to uh, Mike and Paul? No, let's let's get to Mike Me and Paul. Me neither. Just perfect. Um, applause. I love them. And oh, I guess I will say I only found out today that I've been spelling Tiffany's name wrong all season. I don't know why, but I thought it had an I, even though I know that's not like the more normal spelling. And it just really bothered me. And I, I'm just. I'm sorry, Tiffany. I spelled your name wrong all season. I apologize. Whew. Wait, wait. How did you spell her name? Like with an I at the end instead of a Y. Oh, yeah. Probably it was spelled that way in like the subtitles one time early on in the season. And then that just stuck in my brain because I wouldn't have made it up on my own. I don't think. Uh, anyway, not important, but important to me. Uh, Mike and Paul. Mike and Paul. Yeah, they show up for the wedding and Paul is not ready. Very clear. Like, he cannot hide it. He's neurodivergent. He's just, he's very open about the fact that he doesn't know. And honestly, he that he makes the right decision, you know? Yeah. I mean, I also felt like it really bothers me when somebody knows they're going to say no, but they're basically playing out the wedding as if it's a normal wedding where they would say yes up until that yeah. point. And I think that's very cruel. And while, uh, of course, he did make it all the way to the altar, I felt like he didn't do that. You know, he like it. He seemed like somebody who was going to say no. Um, and yeah. I felt like he didn't do all, all as much of the false hope stuff, except for the going to make the rings a couple of days ahead of time. Like that was kind of weird. Yeah, because like Bartise did. That uh, last season where, like, he got uh, these, like, permanent bracelets. Obviously, they're not totally permanent, but they, like, got them on, Mm -hmm. like, welded around their wrists, like, right before the wedding. And it's like, dude, why would you do that if you knew you were going to say no? So I do think these, like, big gestures before a wedding you're not interested in are pretty strange. Yeah, there was just, like, you kept watching and watching throughout the episodes to see if there was something genuine between Micah and Paul, something other than sex and, you know, uh, hanging out. Because literally that was all that was happening. They seemed to, yeah, be, you never to saw have, it. yeah, you never saw anything beyond that. 
They had no interest in common. They had no interest in having a space together. Like, it was just all... Marshall and, and Jackie <laughs> had more plans that looked realistic than Mike and Paul, you know? And like, Mike and Paul, I never saw them look at each other, like, with love. And I never even saw them look at each other um, with, like, horniness in their eyes. Like, I didn't even feel like... There wasn't much it between them at all. Like it. No, I felt like I there was. There was. They were they were definitely having sex. Once again, that's having sex and having good sex and being really horny for something. Not the same. No, I mean what I meant is that they had sex and it was good sex and they kept having sex, but the the <laughs> there was really nothing beyond that. Yeah. You know? And I just I feel and like Paul understood that better than anyone else. <laughs> yeah. With his data. <laughs> yeah oh my gosh i can't believe um i forgot to or did i talk about it yesterday uh, my new theory that um it's only neurodivergent people say the word data and um just listen <laughs> like yeah i did talk about it already but i think only uh and i might i don't know yet but I might even go as far as to say only autistic people use the word data, like when we're just talking about our regular lives. Yeah, it's a it's a fairly unique thing we do. Yeah, we keep tabs on on interactions and 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 try to like change our behavior in the future. If and just the fact know, that we yeah. see it that way, that's how it makes sense in our yeah. brains. Like that's I think that would sound really weird to like a neurotypical person. They're not looking at everything as data. That's strange. Yeah. But to us, like, those are the building blocks of everything, you know? <laughs> Just data. Everything is data. Um, But, yeah, I, I feel like Paul has been, the way he's been talking the last few episodes has more been about, like, I just don't know that. If I'm going to do it. This, like. The risk reward ratio is worth it. Yeah, I, just, I love the like, way he kept saying risk reward ratio. Like, it was... I just like, I think that he has been pretty open about the fact that like he isn't sure that this is a good idea, and I do respect that a lot more than the people who act like they're all in and they're but, secretly but yeah, not. Like, yeah. that's that sucks. Yeah. Yeah, that was just for me the 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 whole um yeah, for me it looked like he was trying at least in his mind to do the right thing, you know? Um yeah. but I feel like Micah would have said no. Yeah, I don't it's really hard to know kind of. Um but you think yeah. she would have said yes? Uh, I don't think she wanted to marry Paul. Yeah. I think there's a chance that, like, if he had said yes, she would have said yes. Because, like, if that had been the best storyline for, like, um, her burgeoning fame at this point, like, then maybe that's what she would have done. Like, I don't believe she had any real interest in, like, yeah being in a long, loving marriage with Paul. Um, yeah. But. Uh, Listen, there was one thing that was very, very important. At one point, Paul said. I just tried, kept, I kept trying, he kept trying to see her as a mother, you know, and she just couldn't do it. Yeah. Which, and, like, that, that comment pissed a lot of people off. Yeah, I feel like at one point, Micah might but I get see it. that If you want to have really kids mad. with somebody, yeah, 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 and yeah. you can't imagine that, then, like, that does matter. Yeah, like, how the fuck do you know how, <laughs> what a mother is like, like, well, um, she doesn't seem to have a genuine ability to really love other people. So, like, yeah, I wouldn't want to have kids with but, her either. I mean, the way he put it was just pretty cool sounding to be H. Um, That's the thing. Okay, so I, yeah. let's just sort of go through how – what happened. So, like, um, they're getting ready, whatever. I didn't find any of the pre-wedding stuff all that interesting. No. Um, and then uh, Micah – is walking down the aisle. The dress it doesn't look that good. It doesn't no. seem to she fit that well veil. either. She should have had um Brett's dedication to tailoring, honestly. Yeah, yeah. And then she's also like giggling 
it's it's like it's not okay. You know, it's not like Chelsea. Chelsea was getting married and was just could not believe the fact that she was getting married. You know, she was just like almost just because it was so great. She was so happy. Yeah, this was like it was almost like she was at a party, like at a surprise party or something. You know, or like Like, you're going streaking for the first time. I can't believe I'm doing this. This is so crazy of me. Like, Yeah, yeah, it's it's just not the reaction of somebody who's just like really excited that they're marrying the love of their life you know yeah yeah it was just that was just not there and yeah. um yeah i uh and, and paul i mean it was <laughs> unlike jessica they had invited all their family members like her mom was there his dad was there everyone was there shelby was there <laughs> yeah and the yeah. fact that the fact that they yeah, the fact that they were all there made you think that it probably will go through. But you and I... It is really a... weird to invite your family to yeah. a wedding you know you're going to say no to. <laughs> yeah, it was It was kind of like everyone was but, just... But his family didn't necessarily seem very surprised, so like... Yeah, I think he told his family, but I don't think... I mean, I don't know... Or they know him well enough, them, like... But... Yeah. I have I have some ideas. The idea the the sort of idea that I have is when I saw Shelby say that's exactly what she wanted to happen, you know, I feel like Micah probably told her friends that he was gonna let him say it first, okay? And and then she would say no. Okay? I, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think um because I'm my assuming they didn't know who that's my was... conspiracy. Okay. Um, I feel like, I don't know that Shelby necessarily meant it quite so literally that I was hoping she would um, get rejected at the altar. <laughs> like, But she definitely wanted them to not get married. Um, yeah. And I, I feel like the question of like, what would uh, Micah have said if she had gone first is maybe just like, there is no reality in which that would have happened. She was not going to go yeah. first. And so yeah. she, she, she probably did know either he's going to go first or I'm going to go first and then I'm going to make him go first. Like she wasn't going to do it because also she is a manipulator who plays off of the situation that she's in and yeah. just making a bold move when you don't know how other people are going to react to it. Like that's not, um, as effective <laughs> as like mm. that's putting your cards on the table before you know what someone else's cards are that's yeah, not yeah like it's that's it was, that's vulnerable that's not what somebody's trying to control the situation would ever do yeah she was trying to control the situation and i was like you know you clearly don't love him like if you did you would immediately say yes because yeah. you know chelsea 100 chelsea loved kwame okay Brett and Tiffany, real connection. Chelsea wasn't going to say, Kwame, you go first. Like, f- yeah. fuck that. Yeah. You, if you love someone, then you are going to say yes because, first of all, it's how you feel. And second of all, you put your heart on the line because that's worth it because you love them. And even the idea of if you love me, then I'll love you. Like, that's not – that doesn't count, you know? Yeah. So even – even if Paul wasn't sure what he was going to say ahead of time, which maybe is the case, that moment where she's like, your turn. Um, yeah, I would have been like, okay, if you're going to really put it on wanna, me, yeah. if you want me to be the one like breaking this, then here like, I am. Obviously, we're not ready to do this. Yeah, clearly. I mean, you clearly do not love me enough. If I think part of it was, here's the thing. I think part of it may have been that he was thinking... If she said, I mean, if she had said yes, you know, it would have somewhat proven to him that she's at least somewhat serious about starting to like a, the kind of life that he wants, you know. Um, but the way she put it back to him, it was like, no, this is just not serious to her. Like, yeah. she's not taking it as seriously as, you know, as somebody who would be who wants to get married would. And it it really was like, (laughs) it's a no in itself, uh, declining to say yes. And, but it's a no that then puts 
the onus on him and then yeah. um it makes her into like the victim role and it puts all it's gonna put the backlash on him instead of her yeah. and um I don't feel like the backlash is really on him, though. I mean, for, for my side, I don't feel like that's not what I. I, hate. Think, I don't think it worked out as well as it usually does for her, because yeah. I think a lot of people saw through it. At least people on Twitter. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I mean, like for me, the thing Facebook was people are different or the something. The thing I that know. I really didn't like was like after it was a no, and she like ran away to like go yeah. like basically handle it. Paul went over there and just like stands over there like a like a little dummy <laughs> like, dude. i mean i think it's i think it's good to go because he does still care about her he wants to yeah. comfort her talk it out with her if she wants but the second she says i don't want you here you need to leave paul uh -huh. you need to leave uh -huh. yeah yeah but he doesn't because now he feels bad and he is wanting the person who he just hurt to um comfort him comfort his feelings and like fucking grow up paul I'm just like, like no come on you don't get to do that like you don't get to hurt somebody and then be like please comfort me now so i don't feel bad for hurting you like if she says go away go away that that is the part that i was like i don't like that but yeah. um i think most of how he handled it i totally understand but like i don't know he's got some they all got issues. Traits. They all got issues. Uh, Bliss and Zach. Oh, hold on. I'm not done. <laughs> um, one, one thing I have seen a lot of people say about Paul is that he's emotionless. And that, I think, is just um, an unfair misreading of yeah, like, that's his neurodivergent style of communication. Yeah. I don't think he was emotionless at all. Because no. also you, just, you gotta listen to his words instead Man, of expecting part, at him. At the end, to... when he was like, "I'm gonna go drown in a river now," yeah, like I really felt that because I've done this yeah. to somebody where I've said no, and I've wanted to literally go drown in a river because you feel like shit. You feel like you've you're causing so much deep pain to someone, uh, and you can't. And do I about never it. have figured out like what uh, other people are what they want to hear to like believe you that you're sad or like, I, I don't know how to do that either. If I'm just going to talk about it. Like I, it's, I don't know. I, I don't know what people need to, in order to believe him when he's saying that mm -hmm. he is sad like or, you know, to believe that he has emotions. I know that they don't just believe your words, but I like, I truly don't think we're really able to do like the display that they want. Well, it's sort of like if you're in pain and you go to the hospital, there's a huge right. problem for autistic people, especially that like we just don't express our pain in the same way. And so that will make doctors not believe us. And I had a big problem with that when I was sick and I was in really bad pain because I'm just telling them like, this is the worst pain I've ever felt. It is excruciating. Mm -hmm. But I'm not like screaming or crying on or laying on the floor. I don't know. It's like they want some big display. They want I you to be a lot more emotional about it. But it's like I'm emotional because I'm telling you. Yeah. I don't I don't know how it's to like not how our emotions our emotions yeah, just, we just don't work like that. We express it by carefully thinking about what are the exact words that define this experience emotional experience i'm having yeah. and then we try to say those but that is that doesn't count for yeah. <laughs> neurotypicals apparently you need to be louder um and like yeah i don't know more more just like uh, i don't know <laughs> um, so are we moving are we moving to bliss because <laughs> oh, i want to okay. i want to get to the point where bliss is walking down the aisle and her dad is still being a fucking douchebag <laughs> okay well let's first talk about before the wedding because they've got some before the wedding moments um yeah. uh zach is talking with his bros and they, they are grilling him a bit um and asking him like why why this girl how are you so sure 
I did think it was kind of fun that he said they both identify as an owl. Um, and he, <laughs> for him, it's because he stays up all night and is a little different from the other birds. I was just like, okay, so uh, he knows, he knows, he knows. <laughs> um, uh. And uh, I did find it interesting that he said that he likes Bliss's dad. And I was like, geez, I didn't. And I wasn't even like yeah. the focus of that conversation. Oh, he's already manipulated him. I guess. Or <laughs> Zach is just like has a more generous read on people than I do, which I'm sure is true. Because I used to give everyone the benefit of the doubt until I just found out that that's not an accurate way of interpreting most people. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, so then Zach uh, goes up at the front. He's waiting. He does look a little, a little nervous. Then Bliss is getting escorted by both her parents, one on each side. I like that because also her mom is so great. Why only have your dad walk you when um, he's... <laughs> not the parent who's like nicest to you and uh we don't need to follow those sexist traditions to the letter anymore um and yeah her dad is still sort of like you still have time to like run the other direction like <laughs> yeah yeah i mean um for me the i think seeing his sister i just could not stop thinking about Irina. <laughs> she looks so much like Irina. i don't yeah. know how it happened I, I yeah it, it just, it's fast uh, yeah they really look yeah. a lot alike yeah yeah because like i like... tweeted about it i tweeted pi a picture of each of them and then like i always write alt text for my photos and descriptions of what's in the image so that um blind people can still know what <laughs> pictures you tweeted and so that required like describing in detail why they look similar and i felt very creepy doing that but that also made me just more sure that like yeah no they they really do look alike it's like yeah all of their features were very similar and i could describe yeah. them in basically the exact same way yeah. is, i don't yeah. know what are the odds it's weird yeah like how do you i just i, I kept looking at them <laughs> the first time that they met the first time you met the sister i was like holy shit this is gonna be awkward and yeah the awkwardness just didn't go away it's also if they'd met the normal way we would be like, whoa, Zach's a little creepy, like dating a girl who looks like his sister. But he had no idea what she looked like. <laughs> yeah, that was the thing. Like, I he just that's the thing. If it had ha he didn't have any idea what she looked like, but he did at one point did. And he was still interested in her, but like, you mm. know, he loved her from the inside as in he had been manipulated. Um yeah. so yeah. So thoughts about Bliss's dress. I thought she looked great. I thought she was going to, and she did. What did you think? I thought it was great. It was just a little too much, like the the the, the I don't know the sleeve. Things. I know you didn't like the sleeves. The sleeves were controversial. Yeah. I did. I it did look at one point like they weren't connected to the dress. I couldn't tell. That I thought would yeah. be a little weird. I just I have no idea what the hell is going on. With that. <laughs> with I have a harder dress. time getting on board if they're I mean, like standing She was happy with sleeves. it. She looked. Listen, Bliss. Honey, if you're listening to this podcast, I we want like you to know you. <laughs> that we like you and that dress. You looked gorgeous. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, like, I like extra and over the top. There's no real, yeah. there's no such thing as like too much for me. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I thought she looked great. Yeah, no, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not, I'm going to say. She if the sleeves were standalone, yeah, I think yeah. that's a little strange. I won't lie. But in general, still, I thought she looked really good. <laughs> general yeah like yeah, overall i thought i thought when they yeah i thought while they were walking there i i was thinking about his mom and then he started talking about his mom um when during their like before the wedding um oh I yeah he was talking to his grandma that was pretty sweet yeah yeah and his grandma seemed pretty sweet yeah i really really like i felt like they had a really genuine connection and there was like no doubt in my mind that they were both going to say yes. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like yeah. originally I thought it would be pretty wild for them to get married just cause like if it was me, I wouldn't want to get back on the expedited timeline if I had already gotten off of it. <laughs> like, but um, 
I, I see why, like, they they basically had an opportunity to just do the show together the way they would have if he, like, he hadn't done the detour with Arena. And so, yeah, well, like, I, I kind of get why they just decided to do that. Yeah. Also, as we said before, it it means a wedding that Netflix pays for. And if you think you're going to get married anyway, then fuck yeah, have Netflix pay for your wedding. The question I have is, did Irina return the ring? I'm I probably not because you don't have to. So why would you? Yeah. All right. I'm 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 gonna be I'm okay I, with I that. I sincerely doubt she did because, um, yeah. There's no requirement. Uh, I I learned this on the, I think it's like out out of the pods podcast with um, Deep D and Natalie because they've both been on Love Is Blind, so they can. Natalie's uh, the one who said no to Shane, right? Yes. And she got to keep her ring. And Deep Sea got to keep her ring. And yeah, they said, you don't have to give it back. So Good I feel like them. maybe you're, I, I, I kind of, unless it's just a great ring, Arena probably didn't keep wearing it. But like, why wouldn't you at least sell it if you could? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm happy. I am happy that, hmm, I am happy that at the end of the day, Zach's mom is happy. Oh, you think this like brought her spirit some peace? Yeah. I I did think um it was beautiful that like uh she definitely like her memory was included in the day because you're right and like they talked about her beforehand and then obviously they did their first dance to I hope you dance which they had agreed upon in the pods um and I I did hear some people like they just thought it was weird to do that as your first dance because it's not about romantic love it's about like um Leanne Womack wrote it about her daughter but I'm like no that's exactly the point like it's because that song is about both of their relationships with their mothers um which is yeah. nice yeah I was I really like I really really like the fact that their relationship just grew from sort of like this very deep respect um to like this nurturing relationship where they where I think Bliss understands um, just how much Zach relied on his mom. Um, and Zach knows that Bliss loves him despite all his weirdness. I think, I think they just really understand each other. They understand each other fairly effortlessly, especially now that they get to just have a normal relationship and see each other and <laughs> talk things out and stuff. Um you know, that's like they built that in the pods, but then it would, you'd always still wonder, like, but how can you be sure when you haven't actually met them yet? Um, but I think also, like, Bliss has got, I think one of the things that made it so that they did get married is I think Bliss has gotten to a point where she totally understands, like, why the breakup happened. And, you know, because also she understands that. Yeah. Yeah. I think after after knowing everything and the way that Irina like talking to Zach about what Irina told him and knowing what had happened behind the scenes, she knows that Irina was a manipulative little dick. And um, yeah. Yeah. And especially just know, like finding out more about just the depth of his fear of um, his loved ones, family, not liking him that like that was, a huge factor yeah yeah i um I, honestly i think their relationship is so good that they've won a lot of people over because i've heard a lot of people be like i'm actually really like happy for them and like people were in general like not on board because also so many people just really didn't like zach but mm -hmm. i've also seen people say like, wow he's so different with her yeah. and and that's the thing too it's like <laughs> She's not if, telling him he's a cartoon character. <laughs> that helps. Yeah. Well, it's, all, it's always like, what are you, how are you seeing us? What context are you seeing us in? What um, are you comparing us to in order to interpret us? Because like um, neurodivergent people, if you're expect, if you're putting them in like a neurotypical <laughs> context and judging them as a neurotypical, then it's easy to like, make a lot of negative judgments but then you 
see a neurodivergent person in a context where they're comfortable, surrounded by people who are yeah. like them. And it's like, wow, all those things that seemed like social problems or emotional problems, those aren't there because they're context yeah. dependent. Yeah. Yeah. Like as soon as we're around um, other neurodivergent people, <laughs> stop seeing us as cartoon characters. <laughs> like we're, we're no longer cartoon characters. We're no longer, it doesn't look like the other people with us are uncomfortable from our stare, you know? Yeah. Because they're looking at us in the same way. Yeah. With the same eyes. He and Bliss yeah. make, a, you know, the same kind of eye contact. It makes perfect sense. <laughs> like, um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you put me in the wrong context and, like, I seem pretty awkward and weird, too, you know? And then, yeah. um, but very Same. Weirdly, I'm, obviously, because I'm, I'm in general yeah. cool and suave. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. In general, very, very suave. Very, very cool. Yeah, suave yeah. is probably a perfect word to describe you. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, you get paid to be cool and suave. I do? Yeah. Who? I need, who's paying me to be suave? I mean, this, you were being, like, suave little people over here discussing other people's lives. So, of course, their first dance was to I Hope You Dance. And I thought it was kind of cute how then that was, like, the end of that episode. Just went and revisited the other couples but still played that song. And I thought that was kind of cute. Also, like, good for Leanne Womack. She's getting those royalties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, for- <laughs> I mean, for <clears throat> do we wrap up this episode? Yeah, I mean, I I guess we can make some predictions about you know if people are still together, and then on yeah. Sunday there is the live reunion, and it is airing at five p.m. Pacific time, eight p.m. Eastern time. So for me, seven p.m. Central time. We will be watching it, and then we will podcast immediately afterwards yeah and so we'll have an episode up about that on sunday and we're gonna just learn so much about what was going on behind the scenes what's happened since then you know like well i know we're gonna have a lot to say at that point yeah I, but what I are your guesses be... who do you think still together uh let's see brett and tiffany are together um for sure Bliss and Zach are also together. I think so. Tough one on Chelsea and Kwame. I'm going to say they're still together. My guess is they're still together, but that might have gotten rocky since the show came out because I think watching that and like watching all the inappropriate shit Kwame said to Micah in, like at Chelsea's birthday party and stuff, like that has probably caused some problems. Be drama. For them. There's going to be drama. Yeah. I really hope the Lachey's. Oh my gosh, my dog. Yeah. I hope the Lachey's actually like ask some hard hitting questions and ask the couples like what it felt like to watch the show and like see what had happened that they didn't know about because I'm so fucking curious about that. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of want to see. I want to see what happens. I'm very, very careful. I mean, I'm very, very curious about what's going to happen to Micah and Paul. Um, I don't really particularly want to see Jackie. Um, yeah, I hope she doesn't come, honestly. Yeah, don't really care for her. After that homophobic bullshit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to see what's going to happen. I think there's going to be at least some drama. Oh, my God. I think without a doubt. Um and so yeah so we'll have an episode up sunday and then next week we are having um casey who is domestic blisters on tiktok if any of you guys Mm -hmm. follow her we're gonna have her on just to sort of talk about the season as a whole and um get a different neurodivergent perspective you know instead of just josh Mm -hmm. and me and uh yeah i think that will be really interesting sort of like looking for broader themes and what we've learned you know because we're just not not ready to be done talking about love is blind season four no we're not we're not we're not um all right you can also uh send me a message uh you can find me on social media twitter or tiktok if you dm me with an opinion about this season and you say that i can read it on the podcast i will read your 
neurodivergent perspective on the podcast. Yes. And and guess what? We are what? looking to podcast more shows and we want your suggestions of what shows you want us to podcast about. Yeah. Especially if you know a new season of a show is coming up, um, we would love to podcast, you know, along with something as it is airing the way that we've been doing. And I just uh, am not like in the know enough to have any idea <laughs> what we might mm. uh, podcast about next. But we are, yeah, open to suggestions. Um, I'm going to put our social media links in the description. You can find me at Erica Heidewald. Erica's with a K. Heidewald is <laughs> H-E-I-D-E-W-A-L-D. And you, Josh? I am Jay Shariar, J-S-H-A-H-R-Y-A-R. Um, also, I want to say thank you again to everybody who's been rating, leaving us ratings and reviews. We love them. Um, if you haven't done that yet, we do really appreciate it if you just like click that little five star. And if you got a l- few more seconds, write a little review. I also got a okay. comment from Any someone. Any kind of engagement helps. Yeah, it, it really does. I got a comment today from someone saying they started watching Love is Blind just so that they could listen to the podcast. And I thought (laughs) that was just the coolest. (laughs) I love that. Um, So, yeah, thank you so much. We sort of we started podcasting out to nobody, basically, for ourselves. And it's a it's more fun to actually have people listen to it for sure. (laughs) Yeah. All right. And uh, I guess we will see you on Sunday. Heck, yeah. I can't wait. (laughs) all right um all right peace out y'all enjoy the episode and enjoy our episode yeah till death do us part amen (laughs) Bye. bye